Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I know that it's been a little while. Uh, that is because I have moved, so I am now in a new apartment. I kind of wanted to just jump back in with a really fun tarot tag that I is like so exactly up my alley because you might not know this, but I am a Capricorn Ascendant, and I'm a Libra Sun, and I'm a Virgo Moon, which basically all together means that I really like criticizing things. <laughs> and I try to make it seem like I really like uh, editing and like making things perfect and analyzing, and I try to come up with a bunch of pretty words, but like let's, a, a lot of times, yeah, it's basically just criticizing things or, or critiquing things. <laughs> um, so basically this tag is perfect for me, and it is the No Disclaimers Tarot Tag, which was started by Katie Flowers. Love Katie Flowers. Um, Basically, it's just a bunch of prompt questions about things that annoy me or things that you don't like, uh, not just me, anyone, <laughs> who that you don't like about tarot or tarot decks or tarot tube, tarot community, all these things. So, and, and you share all of your opinions without adding any disclaimers. So I'm just going to jump right in on that. The first prompt is, what trends or tropes in tarot annoy you the most? And coming from the perspective of someone who loves animal decks and wants to have more animal decks, I get kind of annoyed when animal decks have the same selection of animals, which frankly, like the majority of animal decks, yeah, they have basically a very shallow pool of animals that they choose from. They are typically Eurocentric or North American centric and it's pretty annoying because then you end up with a billion decks that have ravens in it, a billion decks that have deer, like white-tailed Bambi deer in it, and you know, you just kind of have the same decks over and over, or you know, the same animals represented in the deck over and over. And they're fine, I guess, but I just want more variety. Like, I have a bunch of animal decks, and whenever I'm looking for new ones, it's sort of hard to find one that has a new take on things because they're all just the same animals. Um, <laughs> I think this is especially annoying to me in the case that um, when animal decks use a different animal for each card, so like as opposed to a single animal throughout like Way of the Panda, or when an animal deck has a different animal for each suit, like in Oak, Ash, and Thorn, for example, is when one specific card has the same animal all the time. <laughs> and so like one example of this is that the fox is on the magician card fucking constantly and i it fits fine i guess but it's like it's so boring after a while and sort of the same thing of like the one that like really gets me for whatever reason is when you have the beaver for the eight of pentacles where it's like yeah beaver definitely fits they're a builder but there are lots of other animals that would fit just fine like an ant or a termite or a weaver bird or probably any sort of bird that builds nests or like primates that build things or use tools and it's like any you know i'm sure there's a ton of animals that i don't even know about that would fit perfectly on there so you know yeah i guess i just get a, like a little annoyed and a little tired of seeing the same animals over and over and seeing the same animals on particular cards over and over the next prompt is which deck do you feel is overrated and for me, that is unequivocally the Thoth tarot. Um, a lot of people seem to like it because it's old and mysterious and because they learned on Rider Waite Smith. And so then you think that, well, Thoth is so different from that, that if I were to learn Thoth, then I would be a real tarot reader. I'd be a fancy tarot reader. I would, I would like have such a deeper knowledge of things when it's like, okay, look, Crowley and I am intentionally saying Crowley instead of Crowley because Crowley hated it when people did that. And so like, I kind of would want to piss him off. <laughs> Crowley is a racist, anti-Semitic, loser, piece of shit. And so I don't want to learn his deck and I don't think that there's any reason to learn his deck or any reason that his occult system should be valid or valuable. Like there are plenty of other fancy old occult systems like the Hermetic system or, you know, really early on um, Trionfi systems like the Soleil Tarot and like, or, you know, there's like 
so many other symbolisms and, and structures that you can use besides Rider Waite Smith, if you're just bored with that, that were not created by a racist, anti Semitic, like, piece of shit who thinks that he's the shit. Like, so there's all that aspect of it. And as far as, like, defending Crowley about, well, you don't have to agree with him to get something out of his work, it's like, yeah, that's true. But when there are so many other choices that are just as deep and beautiful and interesting and have deep symbolic meaning, then, like, and that were also created by less awful human beings, then why would you choose the Thoth one? Just because it's popular? Like, this is what I mean when I say it's overrated. Like, whatever. And then, you know, even setting Crowley aside, I still think that the actual images of the deck, like, I know that's the part that a lot of people are really attracted to. I still think that the images are so overrated, where it's like, the details are super hard to see because there's so many little overlapping bits. I mean, the prime example of this is the Eon card or Aeon card, which is like the uh, number 20. And the text printed on top of the suits for like the titles are impossible to read and look super ugly. And <laughs> it's like... There's just all of this weird overlapping artwork, weird symbols that are not intuitive, don't make any sense, and the whole thing is like a big old study project that seems to be a kind of rite of passage that like shouldn't be that way. And that way, like, you know, basically to sum it all up, yeah, Thoth is super overrated. The next one is what are your least favorite decks you've seen since joining Tarot Tube? And this isn't a disclaimer, but this isn't nearly as serious a dislike as my dislike for Thoth. This is more of one that I'm just not that into, and that is the Lightseer's Tarot. <laughs> um, I just don't vibe with the handwriting style for the titles and like the really modern depictions and especially the super realistic faces. They're not like photo realistic, but they're realistic enough that they look like real people. And frankly, they're just, they just don't really look like people that I'd want to hang out with, if that makes any sense. Like they're, the, the one that gets me is the Knight of Cups, because that one in particular, I feel like looks like the sort of person that Hollywood is trying to convince us is attractive and not actually like an attractive person, if that makes any sense. Like to sort of sum it up, I feel like the style of the people and the people depicted look like celebrities that went to the fire festival. The next prompt is, what is one card that has ruined a deck for you? This happens extremely rarely because usually there's a good chunk of cards that I'm not that into and that will prevent me from buying a deck. But a recent one and the one that sort of stands out in my mind is really, very sadly, uh, the Page of Swords in the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. The Witch's Wisdom Tarot looks so pretty and so cool and I love the backwards structure of it and I love most of the artwork and it's like I want it so bad and then every time I get to the page of swords I just like get crushed and I just hate it so much because it's so ugly <laughs> like okay so the page of swords the reason that this is really important to me is because it's usually my personal significator card so that's probably why this particular card becomes a deal breaker if it's kind of ugly um where and so i think that's why it was like especially disappointing that that's the card that i don't like in this deck um because i love the vast majority of them and then you get to the page of swords which is called the Messenger of Air in Witch's Wisdom, and it is this super weird gray elf boy with a wonky face that definitely looks like one of those things where if you mirrored the art or looked at the art in the mirror, you could tell that it's off proportionally, and the colors are super weird, where all of the other humanoid figures in the deck, I'm pretty sure, have relatively normal or natural looking skin tones, except for this weird, like, 
gray elf boy, like a little alien, you know, classic Martian gray color. And like, <laughs> it, it's really, that's the only part of it. I even love the goose. I just, I just hate the, the image of that actual character and I will never be able to relate to it. And so it's just, it's just like really disappointing because I feel like I feel like I just can't work with the deck if I don't like the card that is my significator. The next question is, which out of print deck do you wish was still in print? And for this one, there's not really any on this list for me, or at least not a whole lot, because I feel like it's really easy for me to look at one that's out of print and say, "Damn, I wish this was back in print so that I could get it." But then when I'm in preparation for this question, when I'm thinking but would I actually get any of them? Like, assuming this was in print right now, would I actually buy it? It's usually a no anyway. <laughs> and I feel like it's just kind of easier to say, man, like, too bad that's out of print, or I would I would get it. But then when faced with the actual option, I have to start thinking about it more critically and then realizing, like, oh, well, actually, I don't really like this deck all that much. <laughs> um... So ultimately, it's probably a good thing that a lot of decks are out of print so that I can't just impulse buy them because I have had that problem <laughs> occasionally. Um, anyway, the only one that I can think of that would kind of fit in this category is the Baroque Bohemian Cats Tarot from Baba Studios, which is really the only Baba Studios deck that I've really wanted to get. And admittedly, there are like a lot of Baba Studio decks where I just hear about how the quality is so great that I almost want to get it just as like the crown jewel of my tarot collection or something. Like this is what a really fancy, nice tarot deck looks like. Um, but anyway, uh, they are actually doing a new version of the Baroque Bohemian Cats tarot and they've been making it for a few years and um, it's planning on releasing, I think, early next year, uh, 2023. So looks like I'll be able to get that one anyway. So I guess I don't really have anything for this list. The next question is, what are some of your tarot and tarot tube pet peeves? Um, one of them is also related to animal decks, which is that I really hate it when animal decks will use the phrase spirit animal or, um, a phrase that's more or less the same thing that sounds very intentionally like they're trying to to take that word but they're like worried about pushback from it and so they'll say like animal totem or something which is like not inherently the same it's not exactly like cultural appropriation if you call it a totem as opposed to a spirit animal but it just still feels a little iffy like the can you just describe what the actual animal is or what the actual animals are you know, it just feels so clear to me. It feels obvious to me that it is co-opting Native American culture in an attempt to sound more mystical. Like the reason that you would say spirit animal or, or the phrase spirit in conjunction with animal at all is to make it sound like deeper and more mystical and soul-like. Um in a way that directly appropriates Native American culture of, like, having an actual um, established culture and established religion and established spirituality among this culture that venerates animals in a way that European culture doesn't. And I don't know, it just seems like, can you just come up with another word? Can you just drop this pretension and all of the cultural appropriation that goes along with it and just call it the, you know, animal deck or like pick the region that the animals are from. Like, great title, North American Animal Tarot. It's exactly what it says on the tin or, or the tuck box in this case. Anyway, the other thing that I don't like and the other kind of pet peeve I have when talking about tarot is that I don't like the phrases masculine and feminine energy. Um, this probably deserves a whole video where I can go into disclaimers and explanation, but in short, I think that there is not really a lot of understanding about um, that something being masculine or feminine is as much of an opinion as anything else is. Um, 
I feel like I've kind of captured this best in one of my zines, actually, so if that's all right, I'm just going to read a little paragraph from that. From Unfair Maiden 2, We think of femininity as gentleness and passivity. We say it's not a sexist thing because they're archetypes, and everyone has both feminine and masculine qualities in them regardless of their gender. Living in this framework means a strong, fierce woman is a masculine one, and it means a gentle, kind-hearted man is a feminine one. This is not how I feel. It doesn't make sense to me. It's not just the girls can play football too thing, nor about deriving strength from traditionally feminine things, nor about redefining real strength as gentleness. Nor is it about taking pieces from both categories, toughness from masculinity and gentleness from femininity. The problem is these pieces are in the wrong categories to begin with. Maybe we shouldn't have categories at all. A mama bear viciously attacks an intruder to defend her cubs. A lioness severs the throat of a wildebeest. Males do neither. Are these expressions feminine or masculine? I think that just about <laughs> um, sparks, sparks the general idea, gets at the general idea of what I don't like about the phrases feminine and masculine energy. Number seven is, what are some decks that you feel should have more recognition? Um, admittedly, I am kind of a hipster. <laughs> so if some of these decks that I really love never take off, I will probably still be satisfied and have sort of like a special sense of satisfaction in knowing that I have a hidden gem. Uh, but one deck that I do really love that I haven't seen in my own little circle um, that I think would fit well in my own little circle of tarot tube and things is the Guided Hand Tarot. It is one of my favorites. I really love it. And it's so colorful and fun. And I feel like it's either people just don't know about it at all. I think that's probably the majority of it. Or it may fall into that category of, well, it's a collage deck and I don't like collage decks. Therefore, I'm not going to get it. Which I uh, hope that that is not preventing people from giving it a try because it is it is a really great deck and um I guess I would be happy to see it around but again if I don't then it's like well then it's all mine and <laughs> I know something you don't <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is what are your thoughts on negative reviews and frankly my general thought is that I think a tag like no disclaimers should not be necessary. People should be able to honestly share their opinion, uh, even if that opinion is a negative one, without having to constantly add disclaimers and constantly remind people that this is an opinion. Um, and if that is what constitutes a negative review of I didn't like this. Oh, but don't worry, you might. Oh, and I'm not saying it's a bad deck. Oh, and this, oh, and that. It's like, can't we just kind of take all of that for granted and accept the fact that we are watching someone's opinion? This opinion may differ from other people, and we don't need to be constantly saying, well, it's a good deck for someone, just not for me, at every point. Like, I suppose that this could have gone into the things that annoy me about TerraTube a little bit, but even during deck declutter videos and things, people will be constantly saying like, it's a great deck, it's a great deck, it just didn't resonate for me, and I don't know what it is that didn't resonate for me, and I'm really sorry that it didn't resonate for me, and this, if this is your favorite deck, like, I'm really sorry, I don't mean to be trashing it. It's like, guys, just, you know, I think it would be great <laughs> if, in general, Tags like no disclaimers um, would not be the only opportunity to create a video with no disclaimers, but rather um, a, an excuse to create a video with no disclaimers. Does that make sense? Anyway, this is a super fun tag. I am looking forward to finally being able to watch some of the other responses to this because I uh, decided intentionally to wait until I had filmed my response because I didn't want other videos to influence my responses too much. Uh, so I will be going through the tag, which 
did I ever say it? Officially, it is the hashtag no disclaimers tarot. That's the tag. So I encourage everybody to do this. It's really fun and it's kind of nice to just blow off some steam. I will see you guys later with some more videos. Bye.